So you just spent every dollar you have building your car and now it's time to choose a tuner. I'm going to go over 10 or 15 or so things for you to consider when making your pick. The last five in this video are arguably the most important. Also, in no way, shape, or form am I using this video to try to direct people towards me for tuning. This is 100% a just how to choose a tuner in general approach, remote or in person. Deciding whether you want to have your car tuned remotely or in person is the first decision that you need to make as not all tuners are gonna do both. This is the most kind of black and white choice that there is. So basically, if you have decided that you want Johnny in Florida to tune your car, but you live somewhere in Wisconsin, then you're likely going to be going the remote tune route. And when it comes to remote tuning, one thing that you're gonna to need to keep in mind is if you wanna have a live remote tune done, where they are kind of actively logged into your computer and making real-time changes, or are you gonna do the email logs you back and me. forth approach? Again, not all tuners do both, and I feel that the actual like logged in and live thing is a little more intimate than uh, just sending emails back and forth. Location. So location isn't really gonna matter all that much if you go the remote tune route, unless there is maybe like a time difference that won't allow your schedule to line up uh, with the tuner schedule. But if you're looking for in-person tuning, location is going to be really important. You don't always just wanna to go to the closest place if it's not the best fit for you and your car. So you should consider basically how far you're willing to travel to have the tuning done. I've always found it interesting that guys will travel 20 hours each way to go to a race, but they don't wanna travel more than 15 minutes up the road to get their cars tuned. I've kind of given up trying to make sense of a lot of things and that's sort of one of them. Shop or freelance. So this may or may not matter to you. I think both have their pros and their cons. So shop is, is pretty straightforward, but what I mean by freelancer is somebody who doesn't necessarily have a shop or a facility that they work out of, and they typically either use uh, another shop's dyno maybe, or sometimes there's just no shop involved and they kind of bounce around. Obviously, not all, but I think a majority of the remote tuners would fall into this category. So here are a few pros and cons of working with a freelance tuner. Pros, they usually have less overhead, which means that they are less expensive. More flexible, some of these guys don't have typical business hours, so they might be willing to tune your car at three o'clock in the morning. Not always, but they are usually more available, uh, especially for remote work, as you know, they can log in and be tuning 10 different cars all at the same time if they wanted to. This usually results to them being able to get to you and your car quicker. As for the cons, sometimes it can actually be more expensive working with a freelancer, especially if you're paying them, plus paying for dyno time, plus paying a mechanic to help you out or, or whatever else. So you kind of got to weigh what you're going to be paying based off of how you're going to be going about doing what you're doing. Another con is that you typically are going to have to have some sort of knowledge of cars or the tuning process. Working with a freelancer usually isn't just a drop your car off and pick it up when it's done type of a scenario. So usually the better you know cars in the tuning process, the better you're gonna be able to relay information to them, especially remotely. So if you don't know what parts you have or how to explain what's happening or not happening or all of that, sometimes you might have a kind of a tough time, in which case you might be better off like taking it to an actual shop. Another con that we have that is actually pretty common is that it's very easy for them just to disappear forever. It might just be mid-tune and you just never hear from them ever again. So that leads us to the next two things to consider, which are going to be price and facility. Let's start with price first. So some people only care about the cheapest price. I have no money. And that is what it is. But for everybody else, I think if a particular tuner or shop checks more of your boxes, so to speak, than other tuners and shops you have spoken with, but they are more expensive, it might be worth considering paying more for their services. You might end up having a better experience or having better results. And ultimately you're this deep into the project. So if a couple of extra dollars can actually help you enjoy your project, it's again, something worth considering. All right, a few things to take into consideration with pricing. Location probably plays the biggest role in pricing. A tuner in the middle of nowhere in Wisconsin working out of his house is probably going to charge less 
than tuner in Los Angeles or New York City. Make sure that you're comparing apples to apples. If one tuner is remote and doesn't include Dynatime, don't compare his price to a shop that includes Dynatime. You would think that this sounds obvious, but trust me, I found out that it is not. Also, make sure that you're taking other expenses into consideration. If tuner A is $500 more expensive than tuner B, but tuner A is 12 hours closer to you, by the time you take off of work and you pay for fuel, a hotel, food, and everything else, tuner A is ultimately cheaper than tuner B. Again, you would think that this is obvious, but it is not. Tuning prices are all over the place. Unfortunately, there are guys that are charging a ton of money and doing a terrible job, and there are guys that are charging next to nothing who are doing a really good job. I don't suggest choosing your tuner based off of price alone. Funds are really tight right now, dude. Uh, one thing I would ask that kind of goes hand in hand with price, in my opinion, and we will touch on this again shortly, but if I was shopping around to get my car tuned, I would be asking roughly how long they expect the tune to take. Facility. There are a few things to take into account here that kind of go back to the shop versus freelance tuner. First one that comes to mind is, if your car has issues, do you want the vehicle to be fixed or upgraded or whatever it is while the vehicle is kind of there on the dyno or at that shop or at that facility, but maybe not at the you know same time, depending on what needs to happen. But ultimately what we're getting at here is, do you want to be able to take care of the issues that you have without having to take the car home or take it to another shop? If that's the case, you may want to find a place that offers those services as well ahead of time. Obviously we all hope and pray that our dyno appointment is going to go perfectly smooth and there's not going to be any problems, but that's not always the case. So it's like anything else, usually, if you prepare for it ahead of time, it feels like the odds of it happening are a lot lower than if you just jump right into it, assuming that everything's gonna go great, and then you have just a total disaster of a day. Kind of next thing to consider is, do they have a dyno? Uh, that's kind of an important one. Uh, I hear of guys taking their cars to shops and then the shops are actually street tuning them. Uh, yes, even the full throttle stuff. Your balls are much larger than mine if you're willing to do that or let that happen, but to each their own, I guess. Just keep in mind that if they crash your car while street tuning it, odds are not in your favor that their insurance company is going to write a check for that situation and yours probably won't either. Then what happens if the wreck is bad enough that somebody dies, uh, then what? It's a rough thing to talk about, but it is a realistic possibility as it does happen. I actually have two or three friends who have seriously been injured street tuning vehicles and thankfully they all lived. One of them almost didn't make it, but he did pull through, thank God. So as far as facility goes, I think one thing that gets people into trouble sometimes is thinking that just because a shop has a beautiful multi-million dollar facility with all the latest and greatest equipment, it does not mean that they are any good at tuning. You lie. Now, don't twist my words here. I'm not saying that because a shop is nice that they are not any good. There are tons of amazing shops out there that have matching amazing facilities, but it can go the opposite direction as well. A good example would be a place like, let's say Mr. Tire. Anytime a new one of those things opens up around here, it's a multi-million dollar build out. But if you take your car there, there's a strong possibility you're gonna have a 19 year old kid with 48 hours of experience working on your car. Meanwhile, the 30 by 50 pole barn behind some dude's house right down the street might have a master tech of 30 years who is just now doing his own thing out of it. I guess what I am getting at is the facility isn't nearly as important as the person who is actually doing the tuning and don't assume that the fancy facility has the most talented tuner on the payroll. I feel like it's probably 95% of tuners are self-employed. Also, don't assume the dumpy shop isn't any good at what they do. They simply might not care what the facility looks like. Now, to an extent, I might take organization and cleanliness into account though. Some shops look like you would need to wear a hazmat suit in order to walk through them. There are negative consequences to being that unorganized and messy. Dynotype. A dyno is a tool and depending on what you're trying to do, the type of dyno being used might be something to consider. All of the different brands of dynos have different features and whatnot, so just be mindful of that if your situation requires something specific. Troubleshooting. 
I think it is beneficial to ask each of the potential tuners you are considering hiring what their procedure is if there are problems. A lot of shops will just simply unhook your car and send you down the road at the first sign of a problem. Get them out. Ready? Are you ready? Get them out of here! Others will try to find and maybe fix the issue. Just ask what that process is going to look like ahead of time so you know what you're up against. Availability. So you found the perfect tuner, you get your car ready thinking that you can have it tuned this coming Friday, but when you try to schedule your appointment, you find out that they are booked solid for the next three months. Depending on location, most good tuners are going to have a wait to get on the dyno. This is one benefit of most remote tuners. They don't have a bottleneck of having a dyno and can tune numerous cars all at the same time. Reputation. Do your homework to get feedback on whoever you're planning to use. Sometimes people's lack of effort on this when spending money in general really makes me wonder. There is a specific brand of dyno that literally only has terrible reviews, yet somehow people still buy them. Literally 27 seconds of research even just on Google could prevent so many headaches. Choosing a shop or a tuner is kind of the same thing. And also don't jump to conclusions that just based off of a large social media following that uh, that means that somebody is good. Honestly, some of the most talented tuners that I know don't even have social media accounts at all. So those situations can be a little bit harder to do your homework on them, so to speak. But again, if you put a little bit of effort up front, you are probably going to have a much better experience. And keep in mind with a lot of these like Google reviews and Facebook reviews and things like that, uh, take all of those with a grain of salt because a lot of times shops and places and businesses, not just tuning but everywhere, will have promotions and, and do things where if you leave them a good review then they will compensate you in one way or another. So we're looking for real honest feedback. Generally, if you can talk with somebody that has used their services in the past, that's gonna be your best bet is a lot of stuff on the internet is questionable at best. Personality. So just in general, it's not uncommon for people who are really good at something to be a bit weird or sometimes maybe they're just busy so they don't have the time to have lengthy conversations. So I'm not saying find a tuner who you would want to be the best man at your wedding, but how people promote themselves can tell you a lot. I personally avoid the people who claim they know everything, have overwhelmingly large egos, or those where they essentially have to like bash everybody else and talk down on everybody else to try to make themselves look good. Tell me that ain't insecure. Time spent. I'd suggest asking for a ballpark figure on how long the tuning is expected to take and see if that's in line with what kind of time you would kind of like spent on tuning your vehicle. I touched on this one briefly already, but this one would be very important to me if I was looking to have a car tuned. Obviously different combos and scenarios will require different amounts of time, but also equally as important is I would ask how many other cars are going to be scheduled for the same day that you're gonna have your car tuned. If I'm one of four or five cars that are scheduled to be tuned for that same day, I'm no longer interested, but that's just me. It leaves no room or no window for anything to go wrong. Generally, everybody's stressed and rushing around and it's just not the kind of environment that I'm looking for. And I just don't feel that you can do that good of a job when you're spending an hour and a half on a car and then jumping right onto the next one. Now, with that uh, being said, there are plenty of good tuners and well-known tuners out there who can do numerous cars in a single day and good for them. Uh, you make way more money in quantity with this stuff, so I see why they do it but I guess I'd be looking for more of an intimate experience personally. Obviously, you know, do whatever you see fit in that regard. Okay, now to the stuff that is most important from a technical standpoint. There's obviously exceptions to everything and all of this, but I can't stress this enough. I think that these are like the core things that you need to be looking for when it comes to the tuner that you're looking to hire to tune your car. Platform. Make sure that the tuner is familiar with your particular platform. 
You don't want to hire somebody who tunes Honda street cars to tune your 3000 horsepower big block. And also somebody that is familiar with a platform will be far more likely to have kind of previously run into issues that are specific to that platform and that application, which can speed up the troubleshooting process tremendously and potentially save you a ton of money. Engine management. So if you're running Haltech, I would recommend that you find somebody who specializes in Haltech. Same with fuel tech, Poly, AEM, Honda, Motec, or whatever else. While we're on the topic of working with a specific ECU, if you have Holly EFI and you're looking to learn more about tuning it yourself, check out the first link in the description below to check out my Holly EFI training course. As of right now, we have uh, right around 100 videos and it grows every single month. Now, some tuners do specialize in multiple systems and ECUs, and that's fine. Just you're typically gonna have much better results dealing with somebody who knows the particular system that you are using inside and out. Also, don't assume that just because somebody has a dyno that that means they know how to tune every system out there. Fuel type. This mostly applies to methanol and uh, maybe for those rare instances with nitro. But if you're running either one of those fuels, find somebody who has experience using them. Uh, there is a pretty harsh learning curve associated with those. So don't let somebody with no experience learn how to torture cylinder heads. Find somebody who knows how to work with those fuels specifically. Car use. Are you looking to have your drag car tuned? Then find somebody who specializes in tuning drag cars. Is it a street car? Then find somebody who cares about drivability and isn't just gonna make three full throttle pulls and send you on your way. I see other tuners saying things like find somebody with results and wins, which makes sense with different types of racing, I guess. But you're not going to win an award for the best cold start at the local car show, unfortunately. So So that isn't always going to apply. Skill and experience. Ultimately, I think this is the main thing that we are looking for with this. And if you find somebody who kind of checks a majority of these boxes, typically means that they have experience as well, which is equally as important. Everybody has to start somewhere when it comes to learning this stuff, but you may not be in the situation where you want somebody learning on your dollar. I think if you actually take the time to take all of these things into consideration when choosing a tuner, your likelihood for success will go up significantly. Even then, uh, mentally prepare yourself as things do happen. Brand new farts, <laughs> brand new farts. Brand new parts fail or never work in the first place. Uh, problems pop up and things don't always go as planned. If you prepare yourself for that kind of stuff ahead of time, it makes it a lot easier to make sensible and reasonable decisions to address the situation at hand when they pop up versus throwing things and smashing things and selling the car, lighting it on fire, whatever it is you choose to do. So as like for me as a tuner, I actually try to take as many of these things into consideration as I can when I'm actually accepting work. These days it feels like I refer more work out to other tuners than I take on myself. Uh, if only I could figure out a way to get paid for that, right? At this point, I'd rather refer the guy with the nitrous car that's running 430s to somebody who actually works on those specifically than to take it on myself knowing that it's just kind of not in my wheelhouse. Could I figure it out? Yes, but what would the learning curve look like on that when I could just refer to somebody that works on those all day, every day? Over the years, I have kind of like built up a network of other tuners where I will refer them the things that I'm not too familiar with and they'll refer me the things that maybe they're not familiar with or don't have the time to take on or, you know, whatever that looks like. But at the end of the day, a lot of us work together and, uh, you know, pass things off to one another, you know, to kind of give the customer the the best option, so to speak. I am a firm believer that when you try to do the right things, the universe makes sure that you get taken care of down the road, even though sometimes it seems like it takes a long time before it works out like that.